What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released the second RC build of iOS 14.3 to both registered developers and to public beta testers just two days after the release of the first RC or release candidate build. So Apple did also release a second RC build for macOS Big Sur 11.1 to beta testers. But of course in this video, we're gonna be talking about what's new here in iOS and iPadOS 14.3 RC2. And, you know, I'm really curious to see what's changed in the span of just two days with this release. So I will also update you guys on the performance, the battery life, and all of that good stuff. But anyways, taking a look at the size here, you can see the size came in identical to RC1. So 4.54 gigabytes, that was the identical size here on my iPhone 12 Pro of the first release candidate build. And once again, if you guys are not familiar, the release candidate build is what Apple is calling the GM now. So release candidate means near final. So it's not like GM where it pretty much was the final, release candidate means near final. So there can be changes and in the future we could also be seeing, you know, multiple RC builds because it means near final. It does not mean it is final. So just to clear that up. But anyways, the size again was identical to the first RC build, but if we go to the build number, if we go to our settings general about 14.3 you can see we do of course have a different build number so the new build number here for 14.3 is 18c66 so this should be the final build number this is what we should see released to the public on monday which is when we should expect to see the final release of 14.3 along with apple's new fitness plus that is probably what the build number is going to be for the general public. And if we go down to the modem firmware, you can see that the modem firmware is unchanged in this build as expected. So 1.31.03-5 for the iPhone 12s here. So now if we have the exact same size from RC1 to RC2, what exactly has changed here in this update? And really, I can't tell anything. I mean, even looking at the release notes here, that were released for both builds, they are identical. Every bullet point is identical. The release log, everything, you know, the security updates, everything is identical here in the second RC build. So what I think, the reason that Apple pushed this update out was because they must have found some type of bug within the past 48 hours that they needed to address before releasing 14.3 to the public. So it must have been a pretty major bug that you know we didn't know about before 48 hours ago. Otherwise, Apple would have included that fix in the first RC build. So that's pretty much going to be the only change going from RC1 to RC2 here, is that behind the scenes bug fix Maybe it has something to do with security. Maybe it has something to do with, you know, just something basic on the phone. We don't know. Apple did not tell us even in the release notes. So that is pretty much everything that's changed so far from RC1 to RC2. Of course, you guys know what to expect in iOS 14.3. I covered all the new features here on the channel over my last few beta videos. But of course, when the final comes out on Monday, I will be talking about all of the features more in depth. And some of the main reasons we're going to see iOS 14.3 released on Monday is because that's when Apple is launching their Fitness Plus program, the Fitness Plus subscription, and then also the AirPods Max come out on Tuesday. So we're going to have that 14.3 update ready to go for when the AirPods Max start arriving on Tuesday the 15th. Now I've also had a lot of people ask me about PS5 and Xbox Series X controller support on 14.3 and unfortunately neither one of those controllers support iOS 14.3 or neither one work on iOS 14.3. So the Xbox controller, you can connect to your device, your iPhone, your iPad, but it doesn't actually work in game. And then with the PS5 controller, it does not even appear you know, discoverable on the Bluetooth settings on your iPhone or iPad. So that's unfortunate that we still do not have support for the next gen console controllers on iOS and iPadOS, but I would assume we will probably get that sometime early next year. Now, another interesting tidbit I wanted to share that has nothing to do with 14.3, but it just happened today, is that Apple updated their Music Memos application for the first time in over a year. And in the update, they added voice memos integration. So if you are an artist or a songwriter, you may have heard about this application. It was released a while back, many years ago, like three or four years ago, I believe. And they actually just updated it for the first time again in over a year for support 
for voice memos, like exporting your audio or your idea to voice memos, which was originally the point of this application to not have to use voice memo. So it's kind of weird, but I did just want to point that out that that has been updated. So anyways, moving on to more iOS 14.3 specific issues and changes, I want to mention the text message notification bug. So this is by far the most popular bug going on with iOS and iPad OS so far. So I personally, have still received every single text message so far on 14.3. So I mentioned this in my RC1 video with 14.3, how I was not having any issues receiving text messages, and I still have not had any issue with it here so far in RC2. However, some are saying that it still is not fixed and that they are still not getting every notification. So I would not get my hopes up for this bug being fixed in 14.3. And of course I will update you guys when the final comes out, if I've had any issues with this, if I think it's fixed or not, and you know, I'll have more details to share when the final public release is out as well. So definitely stay tuned to that. But yeah, if you don't receive text messages, especially, you know, messages from like Android devices, green texts, those are the ones that are having issues. Although Apple did say in the release notes, that they did fix an issue with MMS messages. So it says some MMS messages may not be received. That was one of the big bug fixes. That was one of the top bug fixes here in 14.3. But the thing is, MMS messages is not the only issue. You know, MMS messages are not the only ones that are not coming through. It could just be regular text messages that are just simply not coming through and you're not getting a notification for it. And, you know, I talked about it, I covered it in multiple videos. You guys already know. So yeah, don't get your hopes up for that being fixed in 14.3. And speaking of messages, also the keyboard lag is fixed for me. You know, it was fixed in 14.2 and 14.2.1. But again, some people are having this issue still, so it may still be there for you. But for me, the keyboard lag, especially in the messages application, has been solved for me for a while now, and it still has not come back. But, you know, that's something that tends to just come back randomly. So I will report on that if it does come back. But for now, it appears to be fixed. Now, as far as the performance, the performance is excellent so far. On the first RC build, the performance has been excellent. It's pretty much the same as beta 3, but beta 3 was a nice jump from beta 2. So it appears that the final version of 14.3 is going to be a nice improvement performance wise over 14.2 and 14.2.1. And even the Geekbench scores are higher than 14.2 and 14.2.1. So that's good to know. Now, as far as the battery life goes, battery life appears to be the exact same as 14.2 and 14.2.1, especially now that I've been using the RC build for a little while, I have a good idea as to how the battery life is going to be for the final version of 14.3 and I really can't tell a difference going from 14.2 or 14.2.1 to iOS 14.3. So again, I would not update when the final version comes out expecting to see big improvements to battery life unless you were having battery drain issues. So if you were having battery drain issues, you know, 14.3 could fix that because that could be more about, you know, a bug that you may have that's causing that battery drain. So who knows, I don't have battery drain on any of my devices though, so battery life is the same for me here on 14.3. Now, as far as when we can expect iOS 14.3 final, I did tell you guys on my video on the 8th that there is a possibility of getting 14.3 later this week, but that it would most likely be coming on December 14th, that Monday. And lo and behold, we did get another version of 14.3 this week, so on the Thursday, of course, today the 10th but we will probably get the final version of iOS 14.3 to the public on Monday, December 14th, because that is when Apple is going to be launching their new highly anticipated Fitness Plus subscription, their Fitness Plus program. And then also on the 15th is when we see the AirPods Max come out. So we will start getting those shipped. I will have them here on the channel. I will be making a lot of videos on those AirPods Max because they are pretty controversial, but of course they do require iOS 14.3. So we would have to have that version before the 15th and that leaves us at the 14th is when we will see iOS 14.3. So definitely be on the lookout for that video on the 14th. It will probably come out around the normal time around 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 14.3 RC2. Again, identical to RC1. So really not a ton to talk about, more so just updating you guys on what I've noticed with the RC1 build here 
in this video. But yeah, nothing changed. Apple must have found some type of bug and they fixed it before the final release of 14.3 coming on Monday. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video on 14.3 coming Monday. And then also the AirPods Max coverage coming early next week as well. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.